Boom. Welcome, everybody. It's the, uh, you know, I'm not sure if maybe like a, a brand new season of the of open mic with the MVP Marco. Obviously, I'm the MVP Marco. Um, you may have heard me on the Chick Foley show. Um, you know, I'm a part of the Pod Foundation, which is, you know, the Turnbuckle Tavern, Extra Cooler show, obviously the Chick Foley show and coming down the aisle with uh, J-Bone. But um, yeah, I'm back. I went on a little bit of hiatus and I uh, I brought somebody with me. I actually have a, I was going to go solo this time around, but I was like, you know, let me pick up a guest. Let me bring back the new season with a new guest. And that is none other than Boot to the Face podcast. Mr. Rucker, I'm going to call him. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. You you brought up all the podcasts you're doing. You're probably like the only independent guy that does more than I do. <laughs> I actually do. Uh, well, see, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a guest on some of those podcasts, but I do. Uh, actually, I do the Chick Foley show, obviously, this one. And then with Turbuckle Tavern, they have like a, if you've heard of them, if not, definitely go yeah. check them out. Yeah. They have a million podcasts out. Um, I do their WWE one called uh, The Raw Down. Mm -hmm. Um Every Thursday, eight o'clock. It's on. Uh, it's streamed on YouTube. So definitely check me out there. But yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I had to skill. I put this show on hiatus because it got a little, you know, crazy with you know Chick Foley show, then that show, and then you know just trying to prepare for everything, watching hours and hours upon <sighs> wrestling. As you know, uh, as a wrestling fan, definitely gets a, it gets in the way of life <laughs> sometimes. It's a so. chore now. I mean, not a chore, but it's it's a lot now, man. It's so <laughs> so much wrestling, and it's just yeah, like. It's, but luckily, it's good wrestling now. Like the, I feel like the last six months, as fans, we've been like given some really good shit to listen to. I'm not listening to really good shit to watch, yeah. and as people that talk about it, a lot of good stuff to talk about. So it's not as hard as the past couple of years have been, especially with like Monday Night Raw. But mm. it's been really mm -hmm. fun the last couple of months. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before I get to like you know, we'll get to you like your your stuff. Uh, but I did, yeah, let me while we we talk about wrestling. What is it? What are your thoughts right now on like the like the state of wrestling as far as like you know the the wrestling business? We'll say overall, not just you know WWE. I'm talking about indie wrestling, you know AEW, everything. Like, what's your what are your thoughts? Is it in a good place right now? Is it is it on a is it on a decline? Is it going up? Is it steady? I feel like it's, it's in like? A, it's in a great place right now. I'm uh, I'm 40. I'll be 41 next week. So I'm old enough to wear. I moved to Atlanta in 97, like the height of WCW. Mm. And they were like running rough shot around here. I'd run into wrestlers all the time, like when I'd go to work at Subway and Publix. Wow. The I went to the Raw two weeks ago here in Atlanta. And besides WrestleMania and uh, day one and like other pay-per-views they've had here, there's never been a crowd that was that hot for just a regular Monday Night mm. Raw or SmackDown than what was that uh state farm arena a couple weeks ago and i just feel like with wwe doing so good and with aew you know trying to keep up i feel like it's bringing everybody up mm. so like even impact wrestling like i go see them whenever they're here and honestly i have more fun at impact than i do at any other show and there's only like five six hundred people there but i think wrestling's in a great place right now man like honestly as a fan you really don't have anything to bitch about like no. no matter what you want to see, you want to see women's wrestling, you can go to Impact. You want to see storylines, you go to WWE. Mm -hmm. You just want somebody to point the camera at the ring and ring the fucking bell, you go to AEW. Like there's yep. there's nothing to complain about, right? I, I've cussed a lot. Can I cuss on here? No, no, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's, <laughs> it's open. It's just, like I said, it's yeah. open. Right? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> the maker's mark's hitting right now. Oh so. man, that's that's what I mean. I got that I got Henny, so Henny and Ginger, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing makers and Coke Zero. There we go. But uh, yeah, no. So like, with I was gonna say the same because obviously we're both on social media. We're both on you know X as it's called, formerly mm -hmm. known as Twitter. Um, and you know, I, this is one of the questions I always ask everybody. Like the state of social media, um, in, in wrestling, in the obviously you know, there's the you know, there's a good, there's the middle ground, and then there's it seems yeah. like more negative than than anything. Big time. Um, how do you, as a, you know, being on social media, how do you feel those types of like, you know, people you come across and things like that? I love it and I hate it. It's like, like I meet people like you. I meet other podcasts that you interact with that are, you know, cool. You may agree on some things you may not, but at the end of the day, like you're just there talking about the thing we all love, which is wrestling. Right. Hmm. 
and then there's these assholes are like spoiling things. Like I'm, I'm a big non-spoiler guy. Like when I was watching the height of wrestling for me was the attitude era. And like, I didn't know what the main event for WrestleMania was six months ahead of time. Exactly. I don't, I didn't give a shit like who the, uh, the agent was of said match that I watched. Only thing I cared about was I had fun watching it. And yeah. so the spoiler part of social media kind of pisses me off. The negativity and the tribalism kind of mm. pisses me off. It's like you're not allowed to say anything bad about anybody. I'm, for example, I'm a big Hangman Page fan, right? Mm-hmm. I talk good about this guy for like every time we podcast. I tweet good things about him. I tweeted one thing, said AEW doesn't know what they're doing with Hangman Page. Bro, I got so many quote tweets and so many people telling me I don't know shit about wrestling and <laughs> uh, you can tell this guy's a child because he doesn't know anything about long-term storytelling. First off, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know nothing about long-term storytelling either. So don't tell me that I don't. Secondly, like, where were you when I'm like singing the guy's praises and everything, but mm-hmm. all people hang on to is negativity. And it's like, yep, you see that with wrestlers too. Like, you can tweet a wrestler 85 times about how great they are and the one time you said you don't even have to tag them the one time you, jordan grace blocked me because i said i didn't like her right and some guy like went and quote tweeted her and told her look this guy hating on you because of who you are as a person but i'm like no i just don't like her on tv like <laughs> that's all it was it was me watching impact and tweeting out my feelings because i like live tweeting shit and now i'm blocked by her which is fine because i don't like her like she's annoying so (laughs) well did you did you like her before though was you were you a fan of jordan grace at all because i've seen a lot of people uh talking about that how they're how they were fans of her and you know now she obviously she changed her physique up a little bit and a lot of people liked liked her older physique and that whole type of thing so i wasn't really yeah yeah yeah. i feel you this was before that this is way before she started doing the bodybuilding stuff this is like two three years ago but i met her at all in the the first all in and I thought she like I'd never heard of her before. And she had that spot where she like power slam Bubba Ray or some shit like that. Yes, she may have eliminated yep. him. And I thought she was cool as shit. And then she's walking around the hotel and she was very polite. Like my buddy Hoop like helped her take her bags to her car. And then I followed her on Twitter and I was just kind of like, eh. And then when she got to Impact, it was just like, not my cup of tea, right? If she's your cup of tea, good for you. Yeah. All I said was, I don't like Jordan Grace. Tag. Uh, did the hashtag impact wrestling because that's what I was watching. Yep. And people just come after you. And it's like, if you don't have an opinion that's positive about every fucking thing, like you're not allowed to have an opinion. So, yeah, it's awful. Yeah. That, that's, I mean, I try to, I, I mean, I try to say clear that stuff. Sometimes, you know, you want to, you want to troll a little bit sometimes. That's what I do. Like if I, I, I put something out there just to see what, see what happens. Most of the time it doesn't. But yeah, I just, I, I just don't like, you know, I would just like do the podcast because I'm able to say it and then yeah. I don't have to hear anything back <laughs> pretty much. It's like I say that and then that's it. If I go on, like you said, if you go on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, yeah. you, you're just going to get ran through the mud. Like even even uh, Sheena, Chick Foley, she'll post something on her Instagram and it'll, it'll just be like, I think she posted something about Darby Allen once mm. about uh, they need to something about it was they need to make his spine they need they need to make uh, his spine out of whatever they need to make cars out of whatever his spine is made out of or something like that because that dude can you know does a coffin drop and right it was just like oh what the hell are you talking about well he puts his body on the line blah blah, blah. And this is this is you know bad towards people that are in car accidents and all it's like yeah it, it, you can't you can't make any type of uh any type of joke or any type of comment yeah. or any nothing comes across sarcastic when you write it That's yeah sarcasm definitely doesn't translate on there. Yeah, it's 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 bad. But um, with with that being said, as far let's let's get a little bit into uh, your history. Like, uh, so wrestling. You said I mean I'm going to be forty. I'm forty two. I'm going to be forty three at the end of the year. So we're on the same age range. Uh, where and when did you start? Because I like to hear I like to hear these stories because some people are different. I've interviewed people that that literally just started watching wrestling. Yeah, I've interviewed people that started way back when they were little kids. What was that? What was that grasping moment for you when you started watching? Uh... So I, I live in Atlanta now. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, and had a lot of cousins and a lot of family members that, 
you know, back when we were kids and coming up, like you get dropped off at the grandparents and just fucking go yep. for what you know, right? Like, <laughs> yep. you wake up in the morning, you leave the house, you come back when street lights come on, like nobody sees you before that. And so at the time, WWF was really big. And before we found out, you know, he was a member of the clan, I still didn't like Hogan. Like when I was a kid, I, didn't, <laughs> I, never, I never liked Hulk Hogan, right? And so I, WWF was the only thing we knew. And I remember my cousin, Rico, he came out and he was like, wrestling's on. I was like, wrestling's on? Like, this ain't what time wrestling normally comes on. So we, we take off and we go in the house and it's NWA. And it looks like dingy and grimy and just cheap, right? Compared to WWF at the time. And I was about to give up and be like, whatever, I'm going back outside. And all of a sudden, this rock and roll music hits. And this guy with paint on his face and spiked hair comes out. And the crowd's blowing up. And I was fucking hooked. And I've been a Sting fan ever since. I couldn't tell you what year it was, but I couldn't have been 10 years old. Like, it had to be like 92, 93-ish. And so it may have been WCW instead of NWA, but ever since then, like I did everything I could to watch WCW. Mm. And my my grandmother used to take us to the Kemper Arena in Kansas City. And WCW used to come there a lot for house shows. And I'll tell you two instances I had when I was there. One, Steve Austin and Dustin Rhodes were fighting for the TV title. And Steve wow. Austin was coming to the ring. And him and Dustin, they had a blood feud, and Dustin jumped his ass before he got there. And we were sitting in the aisle way, like front row right there, and they had the little steel guard rails. They didn't have the shit you got now yeah. where you can, like, stick your hand through. Yeah. And Steve Austin dropped the TV title about two feet in front of me, and I had my fucking arm through the little guard rail <laughs> trying to get to it. And he turned around. He said, what do you think you're doing, you little motherfucker? And I was like... <laughs> And I was just looking at him. And I was fucking hooked. I was like, I love this shit, right? Like, uh, and this, you know, this isn't like Stone Cold. This is blonde haired, stunning Steve oh Austin back God, then. But just to get cussed at like that was, I don't know why I liked it. And then uh, the Kemper Arena was set up really weird back in the day, too. There wasn't much security. It was like the late 80s, early 90s. We were going to the bathroom, and I guess we made a wrong turn somewhere, which happens, and ended up like going through a door in the sting the Steiner brothers and I can't, I think the Z man was there and wow. we completely went the wrong way. And sadly, this is before cameras and shit like that. Cause Sting was real polite to us. Scott Steiner was polite to us, but the Z man, for some reason, him and Rick Steiner were kind of dicks. Like what the fuck are y'all doing in here? It's like, we're just looking for the bathroom, bro. Like <laughs> we, we know it's coming in here to get Steinerized. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so that was a lot of fun. And ever, ever since then, man, I've been, I've been hooked and I've I've never grown out of it. Like I got friends that have been in and out of wrestling. I've never been out. Like I've always the fact that I've been able to get laid in my life with as much wrestling as I <laughs> have is like a testament to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny that you kind of like you think about it, you you know, I have a I have like a couple of good friends that still watch wrestling and obviously made friends through social media and stuff like that, but we all have families. Yeah, they all have kids and stuff like that. So you know, it doesn't mean because you're a wrestling fan, you you're a virgin. You there right? Are, there are guys out there that actually get girls There's, that still like four or this, five of us. They get laid. They yeah, <laughs> and there are women out there that watch wrestling too. I mean, case in point, uh, Chick Foley, Sheena. She's yeah. she's the first one that I seen uh, way back in when I started, you know, uh, on on Instagram, and I was like, cool. I was like, wow. I was like, there's a, there's actually like you know women out there that are like you know not only. Um, you know, that watch wrestling, they're actually like posting their thoughts about it and stuff like that. So, and then after yeah. that, obviously right now it's like, you can't go anywhere without running to like women, um, like live streaming wrestling and doing live reactions and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it is out there. Don't worry guys. If you're, if you're young out there and you still watch wrestling, you know, you can get girls. Don't worry. Yeah. Especially if, you, if you're good looking enough. I mean, you have to give the gab. You definitely well, can the do first it. thing is where deodorant. That's, exactly. that's rule number one. No, yep. oh, sorry. Rule number one is shower first. Yes. Then wear deodorant because I go to like we were talking about when I was a kid, I couldn't really afford to go like WrestleMania and shit like that, which, you know, yeah. it is what it is. And now I'm older. I got money. Not I'm not rich, but I, I have money to where I can set aside to be like, I'm going to travel to WrestleMania. I'm going to do this. And man, when you go to these uh, like WrestleCade and WrestleCon, oh my God, it's oh. like, you know, it's yeah. so cliche to make fun of it. And it's not even that I'm making fun of it. It's just like 
you just want to like pull people to the side and be like, bro, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> you're in a hotel. The soap is free. The water's free. Like, it comes with it. And I'm not trying to make fun of people. I'm I'm being serious. Like, there's there's some people where it's just like you can't even stand in line next to them. And there's you know. For the most part, everybody's like hygienic, but the people that aren't, man, we we got to do better as a wrestling community. Oh yeah, definitely. And it, you got to think too, like they're going to meet their like favorite wrestler right. or whoever, yeah. celebrity, whatever, whatever con you're at. You can't you go know. hug on Mickey James and you smell like yeah. fucking four day old ass. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, like what you are you doing? Those, uh, we see those viral photos of like uh, you know Becky Lynch, that dude. Uh, you know, mm. doing like the prom, prom, <laughs> prom pose. Yeah. That stuff and like the Alexa Bliss one. And like, you don't want to be, come on. You're going to get that close to him. You definitely don't want to be smelling like, I don't even know what. I can't yeah. even, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to say, but. Bologna and fucking pepper jack cheese. Just, yeah, just ass, dude. Just ass and, <laughs> ass and rotten cheese, whatever it is. But um, yeah, no, the, the, so the, the funny thing is with my, uh, with my wrestling background, I started, my father was born, uh, in uh, Calhoun, Mississippi, mm. um, by way of uh, Marvell, Arkansas, small town in Arkansas. So I started with um, S- Southern wrestling, mid south. Um, you know, watching JYD. You know, but it's just all those dudes, uh, Dusty Rhodes back in the day. Yeah, um, and we used to get like we used to get tapes from his uh, like my uh, cousins and stuff. They used to like record all that stuff. We used to we used to travel down there um, every summer. We used to go down hang out obviously and then they record a safe and I'd bring them back up and watch those and stuff like that. But obviously I was still watching, you know, WWF at the time. And I was I was actually that's a, actually a good point that you brought up Hulk Hogan because like I was trying to remember if I was ever a fan of Hulk Hogan mm. at the time. But I think I was more and obviously, you know, later we found out about Warrior and the stuff he was saying. <laughs> stuff like that. But you know, like I was a I think I was a, I was more of a fan of the Warrior than I was uh yeah, so was I at the time. So I think like not that you know, not that you know, everything that Hogan said and all that stuff. We you know, it's past, it's a past. What are your What are your thoughts on that? Like, I, I was having these like kind of like deep thoughts of myself saying like, you know, you know, being you know, being black, being a fan of you know Hulk Hogan when I was younger, and then growing old enough to you know live past all that stuff that that's happened, all the things he said. Is there like a time where we you know? Is there a forgiveness at all for it? Is it like not a, for me? Fuck Hulk Hogan. It a- <laughs> not for me. But that, that's just me. Like, I'm, I'm I don't speak for everybody that's black, yeah. right? Like, but for me, fuck, fuck him. Like, I I never liked him to begin with, and it's not even like the racism is like that's one aspect of it. Like, he was such a piece of shit in other aspects too, right? And now. Like he's like, oh, I found God. You didn't find God. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> you're mad because you got caught being a piece of shit, and now you want to run to the cross. Like, I'm not here for it. But for example, you, if you say, all right, well, he apologized. Like, I'm cool yeah. with it. That's all completely up to you. I say fuck him for life. Like, I, I've never, <laughs> li- I've never liked him. And once he came out and said all that stuff about his daughter and black people and all that, like, yeah, he. I, and it is what it is. My issue is how I just said, if you decide that you're cool with what he said, that's your thing. People that come at me when I tweet out, like, fuck Hogan, or when I've told people, yeah. they're like, oh, man, just get over it. Like, how the fuck can you tell me to get over it? Like, did you listen to what he said? Mm. Well, Booker T said he wasn't racist. No, Hulk Hogan himself said he was racist. So <laughs> I don't give a fuck what Booker T's got to say. One of my <laughs> favorites of all time. But Hulk Hogan himself said he was racist so yeah i mean he, he did uh he was on i think after that that happened stuff i think maybe maybe, maybe in a few years after he did show up on um booker t's show um that he has on espn and they were like you know talking about it all that stuff and you know, you know who i trust the new day okay the yeah. most wholesome black man in the history of wrestling i trust but, the new true. day when yeah. when hogan shows up at the hall of fame and they don't give a fuck about you i don't give a fuck about you even yeah, yeah, you definitely gauge uh like definitely with Biggie and Kofi and if Kofi would have said he's yeah. all right, I might have thought about it. I'd probably still be like fuck Hogan, but maybe not as loud. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, look if the new day don't fuck with you, that that tells me all <laughs> I need to know. Because, that, is, that is true. Yeah, that is very very true. Um, speaking of that, we'll, we'll let's stay on let's stay on this with this topic as far as you know being black in in uh, podcasting and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, there's there are a lot of different uh, podcasters out there now. A lot of different podcasts. You have like you know, Black Announce Table, yeah, uh, Black Wrestling. You have uh, you know, Public Enemies. You have I love John Public Kears Enemies. Is another it's one. Probably, Public Enemies is probably one of my favorite podcasts out there. I, would, oh, they, I know they're on hiatus right now, but yeah, I fucking, yeah. I can listen to them and yeah, I can listen to them and just like just laugh my ass off the whole time. So shout out to them. Dude, they're 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 amazing, and uh, you know we have uh, all elite Keeks who who did who covers like uh, mm-hmm. all wrestling. Uh, definitely want to get her on here at some point. What are your thoughts on like you know as far as you know you know uh, like the black community in in wrestling in podcasting? Um, what do you what do you do you feel like there's still more growth in that in that realm? Do you think it's you think it's like reached its cap already? What do you, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I definitely think it's more growth. I mean, just uh... With SummerSlam this past, well, well, last night, you know, there was a lot of black content creators that were there. Mm-hmm. And I'm just ready for, I mean, I know it probably won't happen before I die, but I'm ready for us to get to a point where we don't have to be black content creators. We're just content yeah. creators, right? Like, exactly. But I do understand, like, as a black man in content creation, like, you're not really, it's a little harder. The water's yes. a little choppier, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I started Boot to the Face, it was with myself and my buddy Marty, who's Hispanic. And then mm-hmm. some life stuff happened and I had to go a different direction. And me and Marty, just our timing was now he's in L.A. I'm in Atlanta, like had to go a different way. And now I got my boy EJ on there mm-hmm. and now it's all black podcast. And it's just like. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've had any struggles, but we definitely haven't had more, more growth since then. And that could be a fault of ours. It could like, I'm not blaming that on anything. It's just, it's, it's good to turn on different podcasts. Like I told you before we started recording, I listened to Chick Foley. Um, I listened to my boys talk mania that were up in Canada. Yep. I listened to, um, What's the other? I listen to Fully Posable all the time. Like yep. Jeff and Jeff and Scott are cool as shit. Awesome. And then there's sometimes where I need a perspective from from like my side of it. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and you you can go get that. And I think that's great. I think representation and content creation is is phenomenal. I think you, as a fan of wrestling, you should be able to listen to somebody that looks like you sounds like you talks mm-hmm. like you thinks like you and you should be able to like i ain't got shit in common with the chick foley show you know what i mean like, yeah no. <laughs> but i like i like hearing that side of 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 how they came up and what yep. they see in certain things like I, I listen to it all man like i was saying earlier i i go through spurts where i just i put shit on and i just listen to it so i'm at the point that i want everything to be at the point where it's not just well, this is a black wrestling podcast, or yeah, this is a Hispanic wrestling podcast. This is a wrestling podcast. Yeah, no, definitely. Just had add on to that. Like, <clears throat> I don't point it out for myself at all. I'm pretty much like the. I mean, yeah, not pretty much. I am the only black person within that that whole group. Right. So it's like you know, like a lot. I don't. I don't take it as like a lot rides on me to like you know say anything or be like a certain way or anything like that. I just you know. Say, say whatever I say, do my own, you know, do my own thing. I don't try yeah. to like, you know, be like them. And, and that's the reason why, you know, they like me. That's why we all got along for so many years is because I bring a different, you know, element to what they're, you know, what they, what they talk about. Right. Stuff like that. I, I don't bring up those, like, you know, we talk about that talk, talk that stuff all the time. Uh, we always say, you know, you know, fuck Hogan when it happens, when you, when you bring him up and we always talk about how he was always a heel. He was never a baby face. If you ever watch any of the stuff he's done as a babyface, he did a lot of heel things. Rake to the eyes, you know, yeah. like break to the back. Like he did all the heel moves. I mean, um, he, he got eliminated <laughs> from the Royal Rumble and then he pulled Sid Justice out of the fucking ring. The guy's last name was fucking Justice. Yeah. And you cheated for him. <laughs> like Christ it's, Almighty. Like how much more of a heel could you be? Oh, man. And then, yeah, then like, you know, doing that and then like, you know, connected with you know we have that pod foundation group with all those other podcasts and then you know be me being that representation on all those shows when i do guest appearances is kind of you know like i said i don't take it as like you know i'm you know i'm the only black person i gotta like represent for everybody it's just right i try to make it so everyone can 
you know, listen. Everyone can listen, and it's not not should be like, oh, only black people have to listen to it because I'm on the show. It should right. be because they, like you said, they you want to hear everyone's you know point of views on things, and you know, like I said, we don't all agree on things. We all we all have different you know ideas of how you know we think the wrestling business goes and how matches and storylines are going and stuff like that. So, but mm-hmm. at the same time, with me now, I'm, I'm like I do this show, and I'm literally by myself. I'm the only person besides the, the you know the guests that I have on. I don't have like a co-host or anything. So that's usually try to you know kind of hard. So I wanted to you know kind of like open the door for like um, women as well because that's mm-hmm. another you know like I said, there's a, it's been a big boom with like you know women in podcasting and streaming wrestling and stuff like that. So I wanted to get those content creators um, as well. Cause obviously, you know, Chick Foley, she, you know, she's a lady and uh, you know, she's the only, and that's, and that, that goes to her. She's the only woman out of the whole group. <laughs> she's surrounded by all dudes. Yeah. Uh, so like, I kind of wanted to, you know, get that representation in, but I think, um, there's, I think it's in a good spot. I see a lot of like big things happening with like, oh, yeah. you know, those other podcasts and stuff like that. And they get like, you know, I think, um, I think uh, Black Wrestling actually got um, uh, what do you call it uh, from Lee. NXT? Um, it's Wesley, wasn't it? Yeah, Wesley. Yeah, yeah. They, they you yeah. know they interviewed him, so that's that's huge, man. Yeah. Um, and they you know with the with the BRP fifty, I always look forward to that to see what their you know ranking is with that stuff. Um, and I kind of want to steamroll into that, and I definitely want to you know get into the you know the origins of the Boot to the Face podcast. But what do you think the state of you know wrestling for you know? for for black people is right now as far as you know like you know do you see as like a i, I feel like for me it, it was like in a big boom and then it's kind of like i'm not sure if it's steady or it's on like kind of like cruise control and then it's just going to hit big again because obviously you've seen with the past you know past week bobby lashley came back you know you got the profits with them it looks like looks like he's starting up a stable so what do you what are your thoughts on uh you know Black representation in wrestling because I, I I have my thoughts on it. I want I definitely want to hear hear what you think if it's being well, well represented. Well, you just brought him up. I just want to say I fucking love Bobby Lashley. Like yes, that's that is my guy. Like I understand he got he caught a lot of shit and he was wearing the headband and bending over <laughs> slapping his ass and all yeah. that. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Lashley has been good for so long, and to be fifty years old and still oh look like that. It's ridiculous. Also, he was married to Crystal Marshall, so yeah, clearly the guy was doing something right in his life. Yep. Um, I think, as far as uh, black wrestlers go right now, I think it depends on what you watch, <laughs> right? Like WWE, you got Lashley, you got the Street Profits, you got. Uh, now I'm just drawing a blank. I'm about to start naming off people, and Bianca. I can't think of anybody. Yeah, definitely Bianca, and. You got all these people that are there that have been in the main event, that have been in these big mm-hmm. spots. And then if you look at AEW, <laughs> it's, I mean, Scorpio Sky's won the TNZ title and yeah. the tag title. He's the only person that's won two separate titles. So, he, you know, mm-hmm. you got that going for him. Um, but then you go to Impact. Moose has been the world champion recently. Mm-hmm. Trinity's the world champion now. Yep. Uh, Chris Bay was just the tag team champion. Mm-hmm. NXT, you know, Melo's doing his thing. That yep. that boy, good by the way. Yeah, like, he's Mello. from he's from my parts, man. He's from he's from Massachusetts, dude. I him seen him. And, him and Trick. I'm I'm so sad to see him and Trick like parting ways the way they're about to be. And I don't even don't even get me started on what happened last night with the Usos because I might cry. Oh boy! Um, but I I think it depends on what you watch, and I think I think black people have really good representation right now. You get and then you got Mercedes like before she got hurt. Obviously, she's yeah. taking over Japan, and she was probably on her way to AEW. Uh, you got Willow in AEW. Mm-hmm. Jay just Jay just I don't know where her deal is right now, but she was killing it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and that that's a good thing too. Like black women in wrestling is yeah, like Bianca, Mercedes, Jade, like Red Velvet. Just there's a lot, right? So mm-hmm. Athena, even Athena, I I didn't like her as Ember Moon. She's but killing it. This shit she's been doing lately, this vicious side that she has, like yeah. I'm I'm fucking I'm hooked. Um, so I think I think it's good. I think. We got plenty of people as black people that you can look to if you're a little kid, a little boy or girl, 
there's plenty of people in wrestling that you can look to that look like you that are doing really good things. And it's not the stereotypical, you know, I loved crime time, right? But yeah. it's not crime mm-hmm. time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Lashley comes out in a suit. The New Day played fucking video games. Bianca Belair just does her thing. She's not fucking Mercedes like. She was a boss. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It wasn't your stereotypical shit that it would have been in the 80s and 90s. So I think mm-hmm. it's in a really good place right now. Yeah, definitely. And one, like I said, one of my uh, one of my favorites and one of my father's favorites, a junkyard dog, dude. A JYD. JYD. Um, one of the biggest, you know, as far as like back in the 80s, rivaled, you know, in many parts, if you watch that, you know, Dark Side of the Ring. And even before that, rivaled Hogan in his popularity. Like he was like oh, – yeah. He was like the Hogan of the South, pretty pretty much, if you want to say that. I mean, even bigger at the time. Um, you know, he, just, greatest like, entrance song ever, though. Grab them cakes. Come yeah, on, grab them. <laughs> grab, grab them cakes. That's I, I follow that advice to this day. I mean, of course, yeah. I mean, you always got to go. Come on, grab the, he's teaching us at a young age, man. That's why I think that's maybe that's why I always. Uh, that's where I learned uh, it. JYD, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then thump on the back, man. Come on, yeah. I mean. It's he. He was just he. He was that dude was a legend, dude. Yeah, he really um, was. And I, like I said, he was like that. He, if, if you want to say like he was like he's probably like one of the first big mega stars back then. Obviously, he had the Rocky Johnsons, Tony Atlas. Yeah. Another another. Uh, I met him uh, a few times too. He's he's pretty awesome. Um, and just like you know, those guys paving the way for what you're seeing now. Obviously, there's like a huge gap. Um, definitely can't forget Ron Simmons, uh, first ever you know world champ. Was, so. Not to cut you off, I have a. When you first brought this up, I wanted to tell you the story, and then you just kind of brought it up again, talking about guys that paved the way. So I, I have a, a big gold world title, and my goal was that I wanted all of the black world champions to sign it. Yep. And it was Ron Simmons. I got Ron Simmons, and I got Booker T. And it was like, okay, well, all I need now is The Rock, but that ain't gonna happen. And now, like Mark Henry. Yeah. Lashley, Biggie, Kofi, like mm-hmm. it just keeps going on and on. And I think that's great. Like I I got a world title that didn't have a lot of room on it for signatures. And I excuse me, I thought, oh, it's got plenty of room. I only need like three signatures. Now I need like seven. Yeah, right. Exactly. As far as like mainstream world champions go, like obviously you go down to the lower tier uh promotions, but mm-hmm. I think it's good, man. I think I when you can get a world champion that's a black man and then not be a big deal, which is where I think we are now, because Lashley yeah. won it and it wasn't about Lashley being black, it was about Lashley being a badass yeah. and just beating the shit out of the Miz, you know. Yeah. So, I, I think we're trending towards that way, yeah. And actually getting the title that was another thing with, with Bobby Lashley, like he deserved it, yeah. You know, his, his, his time in the company, you know, in the beginning and then obviously leaving, coming back, and like you said, doing the headband and the. Slapping his ass, having to do that. I mean, you, you got to do what you have to do to get to yeah. where you need to be. But then, obviously, when he hooked up with with uh, MVP, I thought you were going to say Lana. I was going to say, God oh no, Marco, <laughs> like, where are we going with this? <laughs> not hooked up with Lana. No, we we, we don't want to talk about that. Um, no, Rusev don't like, want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, oh no, definitely not. That that definitely probably caused some problems back in the day. But um, apparently, those are like like the highest rated segments for raw at, at the time Those i mean like, i was i was enthralled i was like what's about to happen right now like rusev can't keep taking this shit <laughs> you don't want you don't want uh lashley grabbing your girl's uh cakes that's, that's if, if lashley grabs your girl's cakes that is no longer your girl because no exactly yeah it, yeah you, you you can't fight him like i don't know many <laughs> people that will but i'm i'm single Lashley just grabbed my woman i'm single now I'm yeah, a, I've cool. downloaded Tinder already, Marco. Like it's <laughs> just, just take her. It, it is just turn her off. All right, that's that's yeah, it. it. She's, what she's it gone. Is. She's gone forever. I like um, her anyway. <laughs> um, uh, let's let's head into boot to the face. So, you know, like you talked about a little bit how I would, I would uh, you know, your co-hosts and stuff. But how did it start? It name with the with the with the how did you like conceptualize? So. Uh, I listen to, I, I I drive for a living. Uh, I have a CDL, so I listen to a lot of Sirius XM. And there's a show, Cavino and Rich, that was on there that I discovered one day, and they were they were kind of my age. Yeah. And it was all about like dating and women and 
like growing up in your mid twenties and shit. And then they got like a Facebook group and I joined that and me and my buddy Marty, uh, we would always start talking. And one day, like something about pro wrestling came up and I didn't think anybody in there would like it. And me and Marty would start talking about it. And one day he came to Atlanta cause he's a Braves fan. He lives in Los Angeles. He's a Braves fan. He came to Atlanta, like toward the stadium and all that. And I'm like, yo, why are you here? Just fucking like come by my house. We'll go see a ring of honor show. Ring of honor was there. And we sat at my dining room table. He drank all my IPAs that I had. Cause I don't like them. I was just <laughs> buying them and like try them out. And I drank whiskey and I was like, we should just do a fucking podcast and talk about it. Like I've been talking about doing a podcast for the longest. And I'd actually started my own called the Chris Rucker show, which was just me talking into my iPhone and posting it on Podbean. And people were listening to it some kind of fucking way. Yeah. And asked me how. And I wanted to transition and start talking more about wrestling. And I wanted somebody to bounce stuff off of. And I used to play this game. I would have WrestleMania parties every year. And we would play the boot to the face drinking game. Anytime there was a boot to the face, we all had to go take a shot. So we were getting fucking blasted on these WrestleMania. <laughs> these WrestleMania parties, my buddies would come to my house on Friday night and just stay at my place. And all day Saturday, we would watch our favorite WrestleMania. It sounds so lame, right, when I'm saying it now. <laughs> we, would watch our, we would watch our favorite WrestleMania matches, and we would get drunk, and we would play, like, WWE and Madden. And then all day Sunday, we would recover and watch more WrestleMania, and then we will watch WrestleMania. And anytime there's a boot to the face, we will all get up and just like run to the kitchen to go take a shot. So we we're trying to come up with a name for it. I was like, boot to the face, like that's fucking perfect. So that's how that started. Uh, me and Marty, man, we, we did it for three years, I think, before, uh, before we had to transition and like, and it, for anybody that's asking, like, there's no hard feelings whatsoever. Yep. I know it sounds like it's weird, but it, it's honestly like I was going through a divorce. I wasn't able to record on the same day he was. He was getting a promotion and moving from L.A. to uh, Colorado. Mm. So, like, our times just weren't working out anymore. Yeah. And I wanted to continue Boot to the Face because I had got some steam. Like, I was interviewing wrestlers, which I, I, I'm a big women's wrestling fan. Yep. So I interview women's wrestlers. Uh, and if we have time, I'll tell you the story about like how we got Mickey James on the show. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's fucking hilarious. Um, and then I got my buddy EJ on, who was a listener of Boot to the Face and a listener of 80 Proof, which is another podcast that I do. He would always like fact check us. And I'm like, this motherfucker watches mm. everything. Like, I need somebody like that <laughs> with me. And so when it was time to find somebody else, like it was... It was, it was a simple choice to do that, and so uh, we've made really good friends. We made like some wrestlers I I would consider like not necessarily friends, but really good acquaintances, and uh, it's been fun, man. It's it's it hasn't become a job yet. Yeah. So it's still fun. Once it becomes a job, like I'm done. Like if yeah. I can't fucking hit record and just have fun talking about it, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm. So yeah, he he kind of me and his uh, you know stories kind of similar in that sense because I was I was a listener I was just a listener of the Chick Fil A show. Yeah, and, uh, I remember them like early early on talking about oh man we need because they don't always like talk about you know storylines and stuff and be like is that right I don't even know is that the right date blah blah, blah. And I, you know they be like man we need someone to like don't you hate be on here to like to help us out like with like you know like fact checking essentially so. Don't you hate think, when you listen to a show and you're like, that's fucking wrong. Like, how do y'all yeah, not no, know that? <laughs> exactly. I do it all the time. And I'm like, I'm like, is that right? But luckily, uh, Sheena's husband's like, a, uh, he he has like the memory of like, I don't even know. Like, he can remember dates, times, people involved, cameramen, um, you know, got the boom mic guy, like literally everything. So that, that, that helps. But before, uh, when he wasn't on the show, they would just be like, man, I, I don't even know. But so I, you know, I used to write in and, you know, they used to have like a question, a fan mail thing. So he used to write in questions and stuff. And um, I, I he had to reach it out to me. And they were like, hey, you want to be a part of the show? I actually guest appeared on the show once. I talked about mm. WrestleMania 35, uh, recapped that with them. And they were just like, oh, do you have a podcast before? I was like, no. And they are like, oh, you really did a really good job. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I think it sucked. But uh, 
they end up calling me back, and that's pretty much how I how I started with them. I, you know, was a was a fact checker, and then you know slowly but surely started you know giving my own opinions and stuff, and then yeah, you know the rest is history. But yeah, I mean, I think that's that's that I think that's how it always starts out with most people, like especially with these types of like homegrown podcasts. It's like if you're a listener, and you have that interaction mm-hmm. with everybody, and like you know the fans, like we have a Facebook group and we interact with literally like everybody, like. Um, it, it, it's, you know, you might find somebody, you might find somebody that has like, you know, great personality and they're funny and, you know, they might have a, that, like a quirky thing and just bring them on the show and see how they do. That's also the thing too, when you're independent, like you don't think anybody's going to listen to, I mean, everybody's aspiration is to be like, Oh, I'm going to be the next fucking Conrad or Joe yeah. Rogan or whatever. <laughs> but then you don't realize it's way fucking harder than oh, yeah. like Ugh. when you don't have friends that are promoting shit. Right. Yep. So when people are and they're interacting with you, you're like, what was that guy's name? Let me, let me make sure I reach back out and say thank you to him. Like you yeah. want to hold on to everything. And honestly, I I think that's how like my other podcast, 80 Proof, is just like it started because uh, during the pandemic, me and Jay from Talkamania, we would do these Zooms. And we would just get fucking hammered because you couldn't go out, right? Yeah, just, yeah. So we'd sit around on Zooms drinking until like four and five in the morning. It was like, we should do a podcast together. And we <laughs> built this little community to where like we've got a Discord now and like people are buying the merch for it. And shout out uh, JD Hoop, by the way, who designs all my logos for Boot to the Face and 80 Proof. If you liked Cody's outfit last night, he helped design that. Oh, He's really? That he designed LA Knights last night. Uh, he's done the Street Profits when they had the Tennessee Titans stuff on. He designs it and wow. somebody else makes it like it's a team effort over there. But JD Hoop, JD Hoop, and one of the nicest fucking people I've ever met in my life, too. Just like super humble, just really nice. Like, yeah, he he, awesome. he does all of our stuff. We got like a Harlem Heat logo now for Boots of the Face. And I came up with the idea and he made that shit look so much better than what. I thought it would look like. So if he's listening, JD Hoop, you're the guy. Yeah, that's um, awesome. But that's how I met him through this because his brother listened to Boot to the Face and ended up telling him about it. And then he fucking reached out and it's just it's it's such a good it's such a good feeling of when people are listening and they're liking it and they're reaching out and like interacting, it's like a drug almost like, Oh shit. Well, we can't lose this listener because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So it's, and not in like a, not in like a business kind of way, but more just like a, I like the fact that people are listening. I like that people are interacting. Yeah. I like that. You know, there, there's a million wrestling podcasts and you fucking pick mine. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that, that's a big deal. I think so, you know, it yeah, no, I love, that's no, that's awesome because, like, it, just like you said, just meeting people through, you know, you, like you said, through the not just social media, but through the show, yeah, um, and stuff like that is is really awesome. Like, even with like with what I'm doing now, like with the Turnbuckle Tavern guys, those are you know guys that we listen to, like we listen to their podcasts, and then you know um, Sheena Chick Foley and her husband, like we want to start like a kind of like a not like a you know like a community, like a, you know, you know, like a podcast community where we can like, right. you know, hook up with these, you know, people, maybe be on their show. They'll be on our show and, you know, maybe we can like promote each other, not for any money, just like, you know, just, you know, cause we really like what they talk about. Um, they have a different aspect and, you know, like those guys, they solely focus on like AEW and mm-hmm. the Indies. They don't really talk uh, WWE at all. That's and we kind of, you know, in Chick Foley show, we talk about <laughs> everything, you know, like figures and all that stuff. So like, we're, we're like a, like a, a hodgepodge of that stuff. And then, you know, that's how I met those guys. And then, you know, they reached out to me to be on their WWE show that they do every week. So like it's, it, you know, and you meet awesome people like uh, the, one yeah. of the guys I do the show with actually, he lives in uh, Louisiana. He actually drove up here like a month ago. Oh. Um, he was doing like a, you know, he's traveled with his family. They went to New York and he was like, Oh, I'm going to Boston. I was like, we'll meet up. He, he went to, a, uh, he went to a Red Sox game. I think it was like the Yankees at the Red Sox. Uh, met up with them. Yeah, we spent a few hours together, like me, him, his wife, my wife, you know, shot the shit, like actually met each other in person, stuff like that. So they said you actually like meet like friends and stuff like that, which is awesome. Like that's 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 what I love about this more than anything. Obviously, if something happens, we catch fire, we go viral, that's great. But like I just like you know, the people I meet along the way. 
you yeah. in, in particular, like, like I said, I was trying to remember how we actually, you know, started communicating, you know, I'll bring it back because we it's probably this through a DM recording. that we shouldn't talk about on here. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like, exactly. Like, <laughs> I think you were, yeah. Like I said, before we, you know, before we started recording, I was like, I think you tweeted something about like, you know, just like, not, not with a pitch or just a random tweet, like, yo, I'm too good looking for podcasting or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was like, damn, man, I'm in the same boat. We need to do a podcast together. Or something like that. And then I think that's how we like started going. And then obviously we spilled over to Instagram and, you know, we, we exchange pleasantries, as I like to say. We like to share yeah. our thoughts mm-hmm. on certain, you know, um, things. Definitely thoughts. Thoughts they, is the right <laughs> word for it. Thoughts, yes. Thoughts spell is it. the right word for yeah, it. Yeah, spell it however you want to spell it. Take out a few letters, you know, whatever you want to do. But yeah, we, uh, like I said, we we we've gone back and forth. Like besides you, know, besides you and the people I actually do podcasts with, like you're probably the only outside person from a different podcast that I actually you know talk to more than more than anything, which is which I think is pretty cool. Like yeah, I tell you what, it's it's funny that you start doing this kind of stuff, and uh, there's so many cities in this country that you could go to now. And know somebody there. Like, yeah. You don't, you don't know them, but you know yeah. them. You know what I mean? Like, you could go New Orleans or New York or Atlanta. Yeah. I'm in Atlanta or LA or Kansas City, like just all these random places and be like, I got a listener there that I interact with all the time. Yeah. And then you can hit them up, be like, yo, I'm like, I'm going to Royal Rumble in St. Louis. And people from different parts of Missouri like met up with us, and we had this yep. big fucking get together out there. Go to WrestleMania. Uh, my buddy Joey Delorme that never met before, he flew out. Him, his dad, and his brother, they flew out, stayed in the same hotel that me and my ex wife did, and we hung out the whole fucking weekend. They went to rest. They didn't even watch wrestling. It was just like <laughs> he was just like, let's fucking go. Like it's just uh, it, it's crazy, right? Like yeah, when you think about it, like when you think about it. It's like, you know, all these people from the internet, like, you're yes. weird, right? It's like, not anymore. I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm the cool motherfucker now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the good thing is, so you, you know, you're not getting catfished because you mm-hmm. actually mostly, most of the time, see these people. Like, you or actually, kidnapped. That's, yeah, that's the or, big one. That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. That's, that's some of the, and it's the, 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 the meat of it or the blueprint of it is it, we're all wrestling fans. That's right. where, that's where it comes from. You know, most wrestling fans are, Pretty much all the same when it comes to like you know I don't want to say we all have the same personalities but we're all you know but it's all the same you know you, you know when you're going to interact with a wrestling fan it's not yeah. going to be anything any hard feelings anyone unless there's really toxic people out there but like for the most part you can pick and choose who's you know who the ones that are going to be you know good people as essentially Man, as opposed to horrible people. <laughs> one of the most fun times I've had was uh, all out like the year before last in Chicago. Flew out there for that, and I remember coming back after All Out. We were in the lobby of the big hotel that they stay in, and it's probably like a hundred of us out there. And I, I, I'm drunk as I don't know what, so I'm saying shit I probably shouldn't be saying. And I remember like backing up and just looking, and I'm like, I don't think any of these people would be people that I would hang out with outside of something like this, just because you know differences of of whatever yep. but wrestling fucking tied you all together and now uh, you're all in this lobby taking shots you got fucking white people taking their shirt off letting people chop them across the chest <laughs> like <laughs> you know everybody drunk till like 3 a.m in the morning and you would never hang out with these people not because you don't like them or whatever just because your past will never cross yeah, the wrestling brought all of it together, and I know that sounds cheesy and corny, man. But I just remember sitting there looking back, thinking about it, like this is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, no wrestling. Like I said, wrestling's a. Uh, I, I call wrestling a beautiful sport in the sense where you know you, it that that happens. Like you, you just yeah. become friends with you know it's wrestling. It's still you know it's not taboo to watch wrestling. It's a lot more mainstream now and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's still. It's still a thing with being a wrestling fan. Like, yeah, you don't want to tell anyone you're a wrestling fan because they're like, "Oh, oh you still watch that? Me, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I just got divorced a year ago and dating. Yeah, like the girl I'm dating now, she's like, "What do you mean we're going to a wrestling show?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're, we're going to see this wrestling show." She's just like, "Is there alcohol there?" And I mean, she she talks shit about it, but she likes. Yeah, it. you know what I mean. She just don't want to like it, but yeah, she does. Like, that's what she, so. I mean. 
that, that the trick is to get them to watch. Someone has to come on screen that catches their eye, or someone at the show. Oh like, yeah, like, it, Moose caught her eye. Let's just say that. And see, to, all right, there we go. I had I mean, to tell her like, you, you might want to know something about Moose, and she was like, "Oh, well, fuck him." But <laughs> <laughs> but at the beginning, Moose came out, and she was just like, "Oh, okay, I, I could do this wrestling thing." See, that's 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 all it takes. Especially like when I first you know, started dating my wife, she used to watch wrestling back, and obviously the Attitude Era and all that stuff. But you know, she grew up <laughs> after it's you know got away from it but then you know, of, started yeah. dating me with like you know me and my friends we watch you know monday night raw parties or whatever and she she came over one night and she was like she was like oh my god she was like you still watch us i was like yeah and then you know she's watching it lawler shows up she's like oh my god jerry king Lawler's still alive and then you know i think like rob van dam showed up on her on, on the episode she was like she's like he's still alive too and just like started watching stuff. not only still alive he was on tv last week like, exactly <laughs> and uh you know and then you know, then she started telling me stories how she met like Mick Foley and all that stuff. Like she went to a signing and all, and like, like I said, all. And then nowadays it's more or less like you know, she likes Ricochet, obviously, and um, <laughs> L.A. Knight. She she says he's weirdly attractive for some reason. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of women say that they're like he's he's hot in like a weird way. Yeah, I'm like I don't know the fact that he's got a fucking six pack and big ass muscles. Like, <laughs> what's weird about it? Like, don't play dumb. We know what you like. But yeah, no, I was like, yeah, she's like, she's like, for some reason, he, I find him like attractive, and I don't know why. I'm like, wow, all right, now that I know that, now a lot of women are saying that. It's, I don't know what it is. It's, his, it's a gift to gab. It's a, I don't know. It's a, the it's wrong the comparisons. Abs, Marco. It's, the, it's abs. the abs. Yeah. With yeah. the, um, Finn Balor has, uh, has a million abs. Him and, uh, oh I would God. say him and Ricochet combined. Have the most you ever see the Finn Balor like post that he used to do where he'd be like asleep in a chair and baby oil would spill on him and he'd like rub it in when yeah, he wakes up? Like, yeah, <laughs> it looks like a freaking like ice cube tray on his stomach. Yes, I, I've even, seen that before. I used to <laughs> even I watched those like three or four times and I don't even go that way. I was just like, what? <laughs> how do you how do you get those many abs? And I'm just like, I he's clearly unhappy in life because in order to get abs like that, you can't. Sitting here drinking Maker's Mark and Coke Zero at fucking ten thirty on a Sunday, you know. Oh yeah, I mean? no, definitely not. That's yeah. that, that's so, definitely not happening. <laughs> congrats on your abs, Finn Balor. <laughs> but I'm drunk, so who's <laughs> really winning? I don't actually. You don't want to bring this up before I get to my next question for you. So this, I was watching this uh this girl live stream, and she was talking about uh uh how men and wrestle wrestling men that are wrestling fans have no problem was saying a guy is good look a wrestler is good looking. Is that is that I mean I mean I never thought of that. I mean I mean that's always I think that's how like as a wrestling fan you always just knew I mean knew that that's how like it like you have to have a like the person has to be attractive. Like if you want a star like person like you know why Hulk Hogan was Hulk Hogan back in the day. Tall tan blonde racist um, just muscles racist as was yeah, yeah. saying <laughs> Politicking, yeah. politicking, um, because because you, know, you know that fucking cul de sac haircut he had going on was so attractive. <laughs> like, it was all money. Like, <laughs> um, I, I then, hear you what know, you're saying though, but I, I feel yeah, like I never thought I, of that though. But at the same time, I do say that I'm like, you look at like Roman Reigns, you understand why he's the face of the company. That's one of those <laughs> things that me and you interacting in. Like when he came out the first time, I remember this. When he came out the first time without his vest on, I remember oh. tweeting out like Roman Reigns came out without his vest on, and all of a sudden I'm doing push-ups in my living room. <laughs> and I remember you commenting on it. You were like, Yeah, I, I fucking I get it. <laughs> and so, like, I don't know, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, other men are like handsome and, and good looking. Like, I'm secure enough to be like, yeah, I see it. Yeah. I see why y'all like Aquaman. Like, <laughs> motherfuckers yeah, dream no. is shit, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. But yeah, I, I just thought that was a weird. She was like, she just went in and not not making fun of it. Just like she just yeah. thought that was so cool that like you know, like guys that are wrestling fans can go, oh yeah, Roman Reigns a good looking dude. Oh yeah, this dude like Drew McIntyre. Oh yeah, I get it. Blah blah. blah. And I'm like, I think we were bred to do and on the business sense because that's what wrestling is. It's like you have to have like a look to you, like a so yeah. cool bald head goatee. Yeah, um, like badass walk. Like, yeah, you don't see like, us yeah, cheering but, for Otis. Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, that's that's a you know, that's a new age. Like, but you know, apparently, I mean, all the women love Otis. I mean, the guy had Mandy Rose. Now he's got Maxine with him. Like, 
What's next? It's a, it's a Chris Farley effect, dude. That's how Chris. Everyone, a lot of women thought Chris Farley at the time. Yeah, you know, I'm fat and funny myself, and I've yeah. never been with fucking Mandy Rose. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on here? Same here. Uh, <laughs> hit him up for some uh, for some tips on that. But, yeah. Um, so besides wrestling, what what are some other what are some interests uh, besides you know watching wrestling and stuff like that? Uh, the sports, whatever. Do you have any other hobbies that you're into? I'm a uh, so I, I mentioned earlier that I I got divorced within the last year so like making sure my kids are okay with everything that's like a a big deal for me now um, that takes up a good bit of my time I've recently decided that I want to get in better shape mm-hmm. uh, it's hard to do with drinking as much as I do and the line of work that I'm in where I'm, I'm in and out of bars all day and everybody's just like, Oh, you want free food and bar food's not a good thing to live off of, but no. I've started lifting weights again. Um, love golf, big time Dallas Cowboys football fan, big Atlanta Braves guy. I didn't really like baseball until I moved to Atlanta. Um, and Georgia Bulldogs. I, I didn't go to college. So I just adopted the Bulldogs, you know, years ago. I'm real big into sports, real big into uh, lifting weights lately, real big into like making sure my kids are or having a just a good life. Right. Like mm. and that's the whole point of it. Um, and besides that, like I, I dabble in video games like I I sold you my yeah. fucking Xbox yeah, Series right. X. Yeah. I played it for like a month and I was like, this was a waste of my money. Like I'm not. I'm not <laughs> I don't play it enough to justify fucking yeah. paying the money that I've and I I couldn't live without it like until I got one and then I got it and I was like eh it is what it is um so that's a thing like I I I I'm in and out of the figure collecting um I feel like I started out just trying to buy my favorites and yeah. then it went from just like Sting and The Rock and Becky Lynch to everybody that I've ever liked. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. it's it's gotten very it's gotten to the point where I used to be a guy that would open them up, right? Yeah. And now I've got tubs of MOC shit in my closet that I don't like what am I going to do with it? Like I'm I'm not hanging it up anywhere like I did in my old house. Yeah. So I'm like in and out of figure cuz I just bought the fucking Big E uh WWE Championship with his logos on the belt the other yeah, day. Yep. I just bought that just because I hadn't bought something in so long and I was kind of getting that itch. Yeah. But I'm in there the figure collecting. Uh what else do I do? Podcast a lot. Uh dating the new girlfriend. So trying not to be allergic to her cat. Life, <laughs> is, life is busy, man. It's just like I always got something to do, you know? So yeah. That's, no, that's 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 good. Like I said, I always ask that question to everyone that's on the show because you know just to break it up. Golf, by like, the way, I love golf. golf. Yeah. It, do you watch golf or do you like do you like watching it or just do you like just? Play I don't it? watch it as much as I used to, but I play it more now. Especially, uh, I paid a shitload of money for these like Jordan golf shoes now, so now I'm like, oh, I gotta geez. fucking play. Like, <laughs> I spent so much money on these fucking shoes, like I gotta get my money's worth out of them. Um, <laughs> I'm not good. I'm like I'm like mid to low nineties, uh, but I, I love it. It's fun. It's four hours of just going out. If the weather's nice, uh, you can go with your friends. You can go with your woman. You can go just by yourself and just meet up with people. It's kind of like wrestling. Like you go and you you tee off with people, and before you know it, y'all are fucking high fiving and fist bumping and shit by the by the ninth green or whatever. So I'm a real big big fan of like going to play golf now too which i never thought i would do as a high schooler they they offered us free golf clubs and lessons just to join the golf team and i remember laughing at it and now at 40 years old i'm like people say what could you change the one thing i would change marco is when that coach came to me and told me he would give me free golf lessons i would go back and fucking take them cuz i'd be so much better than what i am now <laughs> could have probably joined a tour too you never know who knows where it would have went but 
If he can still do it, I don't think there's an age limit on uh, if he get good enough. I think he's, I don't. I, don't you know, think you have to, I think you have to have the money, right? Is that like it's it's such a time constraint? Like I so like everybody's like, man, you hit the ball so good, you just go out to the the driving range for a couple weeks, man. You could get dialed. I ain't got time for that kind of shit. Like I go to the driving range. You know what I want to do? I want to go play now. So then I just walk off the range and I end up playing golf. Yeah. But because I'm not practicing, I'm not as good as everybody else. So it's just it's a time and patience. And golf is expensive. It's not cheap. Yeah, I can see that. I, I wanted to get into golf, but I, I same same thing. Just you know, money, time. I'm just like I coordination. You gotta have like you know, I do have the patience for it. I could definitely do it, but I'm just like I don't know. Just to pick up a thing. I, my my thing is basketball. Yeah, just pick up games, stuff like that. Oh man, that's, that's what I do. I was really good at basketball when I was younger, but I obviously put on a lot of weight and age. Um, every now and then, <laughs> I can go, I can go out and shoot around. Like I can fucking post a video of me shooting at LA Fitness a couple weeks yeah. ago. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm really good at just shooting, but I can't play defense anymore, or any of that. But I used to basketball was my favorite sport when I was younger. Um, but when we moved to Atlanta, we so. <laughs> I lived in a mid-range, mid-level financial neighborhood. Yeah. But I was on the wrong side of the the highway was I could literally throw a rock from my house to where Cobb Parkway was. And if I would have lived on the other side of Cobb Parkway, I would have went to a lower finance school. Yeah. But because I was on this side, I had to drive 30 minutes and go to school over here. And this is where like all the rich white kids went. Like they're driving <laughs> Mustangs and H twos and shit like that to school. So to join the basketball team, you had to do all these camps and buy all these shoes and shit. And I just didn't have the money or the the way to get there for it. So I could never play basketball for the team. And the coach yeah. would tell me all the time, like you got to come out, you got to come out. And I'm just like, I can't afford it. <laughs> this is too expensive. <laughs> like y'all want like a thousand dollars a year, and my family doesn't have that kind of money. So I never got a chance to play basketball, but I played against a lot of the basketball players. They would come to the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I think I would have been good at it. But that's the story with everybody, right? Like yeah, if I yeah. just would have had a chance, I could have <laughs> been the next Kobe Bryant. No, the fuck you wouldn't have. You'd have been Oliver Miller. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just too lazy to do it personally. I was just like, didn't want to join any teams or anything like that. Yeah. That was my thing anyway. But um, uh, Mickey James, let's get to that. I, I, I got to hear the Mickey James story because I know you guys are like, you're like best pals pretty much. I mean, like, from what so, I see anyway. I, um, way back before, all right. So we'll take it back to when she debuted. When I was watching women's wrestling back then, it was kind of like everybody that was my age, right? It was like, the women are just for tits and ass. Like, that's what we were looking at it for. And I hate to say it that way, but that's what it was. Um, and I remember she debuted, and I was watching her, and I remember telling my my friend, Britton Jenkins, mm -hmm. like, I think Mickey James is really good at wrestling. Like, which was unheard of back then, right? It was just like, they're just yeah. supposed to be out here to do bra and panty stuff. And I remember telling him, like, Mickey James is kind of hot, right? Like, I know she's out there with Trish, but, like, she's really fucking hot. And I watched that storyline develop, and they got to WrestleMania 22. And I remember I was so excited for her to win. And I remember the crowd just fucking, like, turning on Trish and going for Mickey, right? That was how I became a fan of her. That was how I became a fan of women's wrestling. Between the start of the Mickey James, Trish Stratus storyline to the end, I went from a guy who only thought women's wrestling was tits and ass to a guy who was invested in the story and wanted to see women be able to wrestle. So that was how I became a fan of her. Fast forward 2020 COVID. Uh, I told you earlier how we would do Zooms with people during COVID. So I had tagged a bunch of people on Twitter that were going to be at the Zoom. It was supposed to be like that Friday night. It was like a Tuesday. And I went to tag somebody and Mickey James name popped up and I was just like, eh, why not? Maybe she'll show up. So I tagged her in it, fell asleep on the couch. And my ex-wife at the time woke me up and she's like, your phone has like been blowing up lately. Like you might need to see what the fuck's going on. Like it just keeps <laughs> going off. And I get on there and in the tweet that I made, people were talking about like hanging out on zoom 
and Mickey James jumped in the conversation, just like laughing along and liking people shit. And everybody's like, Rucker, your girl Mickey James is in here. You better fucking say something. Meanwhile, I'm on the couch, like drooling on the fucking pillow, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> so I get up and I like, I can't. I posted a gift or something like that for uh for her, and we all were going back and forth. And she DM me. She's like, you know, if you want me to be on your show, like I'm down with it. And I'm like, this is the coolest fuck. Like, this is why you get into podcasting, right? This yeah. is the coolest thing ever. And I had to, this is while she was with WWE at the time, by the way, she was out on injury and I had to like go through PR, her PR, like all this other shit. And I'm just like, this shit ain't never going to happen. And then finally it happened. It was like August of, uh, I, I think it was actually like a couple of days ago. Cause it came up in my Facebook memories, August of 2020. I got to interview her. Um, I had already met her previously. And went to like WrestleCon. She remembered me. And we're both Dallas Cowboys fans. So we talk about that kind of shit. I don't know, man. I just, I think she was one of the nicest people that I had met as far as wrestlers go. And I couldn't do anything for her. Like she's fucking Mickey James, right? She's yeah. just a genuinely <laughs> nice fucking person. So then you fast forward a couple of years and Lisa Marie Varen, you know, Victoria, Tara. Um, yeah. We were trying to interview her, and after the interview, we were hanging out on, on Zoom. She was talking, and she goes, yeah. She's like, I was wondering if I should do it, and I was talking to Mickey about, like, podcasts that are reaching out to me, and when I said boo to the face, like, she was like, oh, yeah, Chris is good, and then wow. Lisa Marie starts, like, recommending more people for me to do, right? Like That's awesome. I haven't had Melina on the show yet, but I have Melina's phone number. Like, could you imagine 20 years ago? You're like, you got Melina's phone number, <laughs> right? And and so it's just funny because I think Mickey and Lisa Marie and even SoCal Val and Gaw, like for them to be as big as they were in wrestling and to be as nice and just like, if you treat them right, they'll treat you right type of people. Yep. I, I, I love that. Um, and... She introduced me to her husband at, at WrestleCade and shit like that. Just, just genuinely good people. Like, not, awesome. like again, I can't fucking, I can't do anything for Mickey James. She's Mickey James. She's just literally a nice person, and I treated her with respect, like you should. And it went from there. So it was, it was the highlight of my uh, my podcasting career was was interviewing my favorite women's wrestler of all time, and her actually being fucking like a really good person throughout yeah. all of it it's one of those things like you know they say you never meet your heroes because you know yeah well, i met sting a couple times and didn't go the best oh no <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm joking i i say that all the time but sting's never been not polite to me he just wasn't overly polite he's just been really like he's, he's a huge fucking star though like i imagine oh, of course. so yeah. i got him to sign my uh defining moment sting the crow sting, right? It was at WrestleCade, and I paid for the meet and greet. And when we first got there, there was like 200 people in line, Marco. Like, this this line was so long. I don't know if you've ever been to WrestleCade, which is in uh, the Carolinas or not. It's during Thanksgiving weekend. It's, it's a great fucking time. Um, but the line was super long. So I walked in WrestleCade, went and said hi to Mickey James and, like, other people that were in there. And when I come back, the line is gone. And it's like 10 minutes until Sting's meet and greet is over. And I've already paid for it. Yeah. So the guy goes, you got a you got a meet and greet? I said, yeah. <laughs> he opens the door. And this room is huge. And I like felt like I was about to get married to Sting. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm walking down this fucking long walkway. And he's standing at the end like he's the groom and I'm the bride. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck is happening right That's now? That's great. But I walk in and he just signed for like, Three or four hundred people, right? So when he gets to me, he's just like, "Hey, how's it going?" Signed my thing, took a picture with me. Um, he was actually in character on that one. I met him once for WWE, and he was wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses. And I was like, "This kind of isn't what I wanted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I kind of want, I kind of want the face paint a little bit." But he's been cool every time too. But but Mickey James is probably the 
the sweetest, like nicest, genuinely nice person I've ever met in wrestling, which is great. That's awesome. Like just her giving the giving the rub, saying like, "Oh yeah, dude, yeah, go go on his podcast." Right. And like, that's I mean, who, who how how could you like ask for a better right better endorsement? Like, and and saying. not to be like any type of way, but I don't pay for like interviews and shit like that. Yeah. And I know I know people that do. Um, and and that's fine if that's what you do, but I feel like I do this for fun. So yeah. if wrestlers want to come on my show, they're more than fucking welcome. Like I, I'll I'll talk to anybody because I feel like I feel like it's one gift that I do have is I can I can talk to people and yep. and get along and shit like that. And so I don't pay for interviews and other podcasts listen to me like, so how much did it cost to get Mickey James on the show? I'm like, it didn't. Like we were laughing on Twitter and they're like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Whatever. Like I paid three hundred dollars for X wrestler. And I'm like, you overpaid because <sighs> yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah, like you said, the her her telling other people about it, and then Lisa Marie really like goes to bat for for boot to the face when it comes to that's awesome wrestlers that you know, I, it's almost to the point where, like, I want to be like, hey, you know, you can come on boot to the face. Don't believe me. Ex Lisa Marie. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> reach out there, she'll tell you. But she she fucking like always like puts us over big time. So I, I appreciate the hell out of her also. Yeah, man, that's that's I mean, that's what that's one of the things that I, you know, just doing this show, just hope to get like, you know, some type of, you know, just a good good report out there like saying hey oh oh you're on you're on open mic oh dude oh, yeah that's awesome man definitely hop on a show it's great and like and uh, the people i have interviewed you know when i do interview them they like i you know i send them a link i go hey if you never listen to the show listen to these episodes let me know what you're thinking if you obviously if you want to be on the show that's fine but haven't gotten a like negative response yet everyone everyone yeah, jumped on it's good everyone's had a good time so far i mean like i said it's it's loose. It's not like, like I said, I kind of, I try to keep it on, on track, but at the same time, it's just, you know, it's my first time meeting most of these people. So I right. just want to like, you know, get that conversation going and stuff like that. And, you know, have someone on it on a second time. If, if that, if that's what it, it comes to, which I'll probably, you know, definitely have you on again. This is a, uh, this is awesome. I don't know how it goes for you, but like the first like couple minutes, is always like, all right, let's 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 fill this motherfucker out. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> like, and then we like you you're running this right, so I, yeah. I and I know how it is on that side of it, but like I'm just sitting here chilling, and you're running it, so you're trying to make sure everything sounds good. You're trying to get everything lined up right, but you're also trying to be personable at the at the top of it. Yeah. So it's just like the first 10, 15 minutes is just so nerve wracking, and then once you get into it, it's. If you know you're personable and you got a good person that what yeah. you do, obviously, like it becomes easy and it becomes a, a conversation. And that's what I try to tell. Uh, not that I'm the greatest at it, but like a lot of my podcast friends, I'm just like, when you interview wrestlers, man, like don't have a list I freeze and out. you have to get to like, obviously you want stuff written down. Yeah. But like if you're the person asking the questions ask your question and shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. don't try to jump in and be like, oh yeah, that's just like the time that my wife did it. Nobody gives a fuck. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just ask your question, let them answer, shut the fuck up, pay attention. And a lot of times your next question comes off of the question that you just asked. Exactly. A lot of times, like the shit that you had pre-planned, because when you pre-plan everything, guess what? If you talk to Mickey James, everybody's going to ask her about the Trish Stratus rivalry, right? Yeah. Everybody's going to ask her about WWE sending the trash bag shit. Yep. But if you listen to her while she's talking and go off of shit like that, like we talked about things like her losing her uh, luggage and shit like that and me making a joke about the title and she joked that you never checked the title, which I, I didn't know. Apparently, as a wrestler, you're never supposed to check the title. You always take that shit as a carry on because if you lose the title, you're fucked. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, like it's it's it seems simple, but I listen to a lot of interviews and I get excited about them. And interviewers don't know how to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I, I, I that's that's one of the things too. Like, there's there's a lot of good interviews out there. I don't want to let's not discourage all of them. There are some right, good right, 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 conversationalists right. and stuff like that. But yeah. I, like I said, when I do these, I just try to 
go off of what like whatever your answer is like i don't I, like i said i don't have any written anything written down like i had like in my mind like what i wanted to ask you but if we're going to start talking about this like that that whole hogan and that all came off of <laughs> just cover, like i didn't have that planned i was just like you know i just want to talk about like you know because i don't like i said me being like the only black person in our group like i don't get to like hear you know, get to like conversate and say like, get your ideas of like, you know, the state of black wrestling and all this stuff. So, yeah, like, I yeah. definitely had those in my mind, but like the Hogan stuff, I mean, I mean that that came up during by the one of the interviews I had that the person never even watched wrestling before, and they're like, oh, I used to watch you know like Hulk Hogan and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you the whole story. I I, I kept it short. I was like, hey, let me tell you about yeah. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> let me tell you about Hulk Hogan. I mean, you might remember. Let me tell you this. something, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. No, I, so I went down, and they're like, "Oh man, I didn't even know that." I was like, "Yeah," but then, like you know, like the like uh, the conversation I had with um with Queen G, you know, just talking about like we talked, you kind of talked about a little bit about like you know, uh, you know, black people in you know in the content creation realm, and like for me, I like the like the collectors, like I don't really see any like you know, yeah, black yeah. figure collectors or black, like, yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of anime people, not again, nothing against that. Nothing against I, black I, I never got anime. into anime. Don't get it. I mean, I'm yeah. not really into it, but as far as like, that's great that they're into that, but like, I don't see like any, like the figure collectors out there, and, you know. Like, I never thought there. about that. You're right though. I, I, don't, I don't, yeah, I can't think of any. <laughs> I'm like the only one that I know of, and you, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't And I'm not even that it. big into it. Like, <laughs> I, I go buy random shit, you know what I mean? Like, I listen to y'all, and y'all be talking about, like, pre-order and shit, and I'm like, pre-order? What the fuck? <laughs> like, if I don't just, like, come across that shit in Walmart while I'm trying to get bagels, I, I probably won't have it. Um, But yeah, you're, that, that's funny. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, you're right. I don't, I can't think of any, like, black figure collectors yeah like i found like i said i found queen g she's you know obviously she's not wrestling related but she collects the like, ninja turtle stuff and she has like you know a lot of uh, donatello figures and like her room is literally just like it, it's insane yeah definitely go on her uh, actually if, if you don't have it i'll send you the link so you can check it out but like i was talking to her about that on the show i'm like where's the where's the figure collectors out there where's the where's the collectors in general like the black collectors are there like, I don't know if I know there's like you know they have like the blurred con stuff where you know like like they have uh, like black content creators come together and all that stuff but as far as like comic book collectors nerdy stuff I don't just anime that's all I see <laughs> I I'm trying to think of else. the name of uh the podcast I saw they were at SummerSlam and it was a bunch of uh I can't it, think of the name of the podcast they were all tears was it no no they were all uh they were belt collectors. It was like six of them, and they all had like three belts each, and they were posing around the SummerSlam stuff. And I can't remember the fucking name of it to save my life. But that's like, another one, uh, King Coley on uh, on Instagram. He's a belt <laughs> collector. Like you know, he has a Title Tuesday where he showcases like you know all the titles and stuff. He's like the literally he's like the only other black person that I see that collects yeah. wrestling stuff. I don't see any other. It's just the weirdest thing to me. Like yeah. I've, that's scour the internet and i i think it's funny that you say the anime stuff because you're right like black people, black people love, love anime, anime. I, I never got <laughs> into it like, anime. but my little brother my little brother's five years younger than me like <laughs> that motherfucker loved like po uh not pokemon who was it uh vegeta and all of them uh oh uh, dragon ball z and, yeah, you know, yeah boy one that's something that you yeah. love dragon ball z and so like people Ruto you know and all that I stuff like I follow a lot of uh a lot like Seahawk is one that's he's he's real big now. I was on his show years ago when he was working for uh Wade Keller and he's always like making anime jokes, him and all you know, his whole crew. I'm just like, Yeah, I don't get it, dude. Like, yeah, nothing <laughs> when you're gonna talk about butt cheeks again, make a butt cheek joke. That yeah. way I can <laughs> that way I can like it and retweet it because this anime <laughs> shit like uh, <laughs> I don't really know, you know what like, I mean. So, like I said, I, I was like, I don't get. It. I like, I mean, like I said, it's great that the community's out there. I yeah. love seeing it though. That's oh, the yeah. other thing. Like, but uh, other than that, I don't see like any wrestling figure collector. Like New collector. Day. I mean, but these like, motherfuckers are going to Comic Con dressing up, and I'm like, I have no idea who you dress like yeah. right now, Xavier. Yeah, it's, it's 
I like I said, I don't I'm, I'm still trying to scour. Like I started like a uh, Instagram page, just like a collector's page, just to see if I could like try to like you know maybe bring some people out, but yeah, has it hasn't worked yet. So I'm still I'm gonna search. I'm gonna find I'm gonna find a, a figure collector out there, a wrestling figure collector besides myself, because I'm the only one. I don't want to take credit for that, but I legit think I'm the only black wrestling figure collector. Well, if it blows up, media. you can you can like bill yourself as the first black figure collector in, that'll in the actually, community. Yeah, you know you what? Can make a, you make a T-shirt. That'll do that, and that'll that'll bring out the other people. If I bring that, if yeah. I make that claim, then other people will be like, "Hey, what the hell? That's me." I was doing this like this is day one ish or some shit like that, right? That's like, yeah, actually, yeah. You can, Speaking you can of day one ish, what did you think of? Uh, no, I'm joking. Oh, Marco, <laughs> I'm sure. really trying to get me to cry on this fucking show right now. I'm just, <laughs> it just ruined my whole WrestleMania. I'll leave it at that. It, Look, I don't want to be a dick, but I'm going to talk about it on Boot to the Face on Tuesday. No, yeah, no, you don't have to give your whole synopsis. Like, yeah, but I just, I, it's heartbreaking, man. It really is. Like, I think, I think I'm more upset that Jay didn't win, and that it's probably gonna like the whole everybody like, oh, that's good because Cody needs to be. Cody ain't got shit to do with this. Okay, no. Cody won the Royal Rumble, right? He got his title shot. He got his ass kicked. Yep. Now he's back on Raw. Yep. This ain't got nothing to do with Cody. This is between Jay and Roman. This story has been intertwined with Jay and Roman the entire time. And the fact that Jimmy Uso's no talent, Jeff Hardy, Edge, <laughs> Mick Jackson face ass part of the tag team did uh, what he did just pisses me off. It's a, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's upsetting to me because. You know that my my daughters are twin girls, identical twins, and their mm. birthday is the same day as the Usos. Better watch out. Second, and, and just thinking of them doing that to each other yeah. would, would kill me. Yeah. If one's in the ring getting ready to win a title, and the other one comes and pulls her out against right? their little shithead cousin, whose parents didn't fucking make them <laughs> abide by the rules, and so you know everybody's got those kids, right? Like you take your kids to your family's house and. There's always your little nephew that runs around. Nobody tells him what to do. That's Roman Reigns, right? Like, he just does whatever the fuck he wants. And your kids yeah. are like, how come we can't do that? And it's like, because I love you. That's why you can't yeah, do that. Yeah, I'm not letting you do that. That's Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, what do we see? What do we see? Do you think we ever see Rikishi show up on TV as, like, the elder? You know, they talk about the elders. And obviously that's, you know, you know Roman's father and stuff like that. But, like, do we see... Do we see Rikishi show up and try to? Because I feel like now that's going towards you know Jay, Jimmy, and obviously Solo, who's also their brother. I feel like now with like the storylines with them two, do you think we see Rikishi show up on TV and try to squash, squash us, or does he play any role in this? I feel like they, I, I feel a comment. I feel he's going to show up at some point. I just don't know when. You know, my favorite thing about this storyline is every time I think I have it figured out. And I try to predict what's going to happen. They go the complete opposite direction. Yeah. Um, everybody like last night was retweeting me like, oh, you should have saw that coming. We all knew Jimmy was going to turn. I'm like, who the fuck is we? Like, I didn't know that. Like, <laughs> that makes zero sense. Like, it's Jimmy's fault that Jay turned on Roman to begin with. So why yeah. the fuck would you know what I mean? So it's honestly, I don't I don't know. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, Marco. I. On our last show on Boot to the Face, I said no matter what they do on sun Saturday night, that they have bought enough equity with me that I would trust them to enjoy it. Mm. But then Saturday night happened and fuck them. Like I don't like it. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> like, I, I don't, I'm done. Fuck the bloodline. I don't want this shit. I'm like Seamus. They got too much TV time. Take the shit off. <laughs> Take the belt off, Roman. I don't want to see this shit no more. Get the Usos back together. Send them to AEW so they can beat up FTR or some shit like that. Like I, <laughs> I just <laughs> no. Oh I'm you know honestly, man. I'm. This has been like the most fun I've had watching wrestling for yeah. such a long period of time at once. That like, even though last night didn't go the way I wanted to, and I hate the way they went, I'm still intrigued and I'm still gonna tune in. And regardless of which way they go, like and and until otherwise. They've got me paying attention to it. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, it, it, kind of bring it back full circle. At the beginning, I was talking about like you know, 
being happy about what wrestling we're getting to see nowadays. Like you can be happy with whatever you watch now. You don't have to be negative about it. Like yep. if you don't want to see, if you don't want to see Jimmy and Jay, you know, that kind of breaks your heart. Go on, watch Impact for a little bit. Get your get your mind off of that. Watch NXT. Watch the Indies. Watch mm-hmm. the Indie God. Uh Matt Cardona take over the <laughs> him and uh him and SDL take over the Yeah, uh, I'm more of an SDL fan. She's fucking hilarious. He's great, dude. That's yeah. uh he that's another good person to beat. I've met him a few times. Uh, I'm actually gonna be meeting him again in, uh at the end of the month. Well they uh, blocked Cardona, that dude, man. A He's a bro, dude. Ago, so Whatever you see on TV is whatever you see on on the videos. It's he's just a bro, dude. Like he's just like yeah. a he's a fun guy. But um, I think I, I think she's gonna be there this time around, so that'd be pretty cool. Hopefully I'd love to meet. get her as an interview. She'd be fun. I, oh, yeah. I I I'm trying to like I'm not going out of my way to only interview women, but I I don't know. I just like women's wrestling better than than <laughs> men's wrestling. So yeah, and it seems like the women are more personable when they they do these interviews like men are so like guarded for some reason it's like yeah it's just i'm an independent podcast like who the fuck's really listening like, <laughs> right? like, nobody's gonna hear this shit like just loosen up a little bit um but yeah I, i'm i love what cardone is doing right now and i love him and sdl together yeah the, the other the like i said earlier the other thing i like about you know one of my ideas behind this is like, like you said you 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 want to like focus on like the women wrestlers that was my thing about this show was like focus on like the women out there that are like content creators mm-hmm. in wrestling um so i have like i interviewed over the moon salt if you follow her she she's like yeah she i've does seen like her wrestling cosplay yeah i had her on yep. the show she was great like you said she was very personable um it you know just you know that that was my other part of that is you know interview those the ladies that are in our wrestling world that you know they obviously they're, they're a lot better now than they were back then you know there's so all more content creators and stuff like that. But you know, just hearing their stories, how they got into it, you know, when they got into it, if it's if it's been recent, whatever. If you know, yeah, you know, I watched a you know episode of Monday Night Raw last year and I really got into wrestling. I want to hear about it. I want to know like how that affected you, how that brought you in. What, what what was it about that show that you know brought you into this, you know, this world of wrestling that we all that we all love? So but on that note, um, I'm gonna finish it off with my my ending question. I always ask everyone this as a final question of the show. So you're a wrestling fan. I'm a wrestling fan. We do have people that, you know, are like we said, in and out of wrestling. They don't watch it anymore. Or, you know, they might be, you know, oh, you still watch that. What the hell for those people that are like, why do you, why do you watch wrestling? What match would you show them that would change their entire perception of what professional wrestling is? Ooh, just one match. Say so like, you know what? This person doesn't like wrestling. This, this, this right here. This is gonna make them appreciate and love and make them a fan of wrestling. What match would that be? It's a hard question, I know. So, mm, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna cheat though. I'm gonna give you a women's match and a men's match. Okay. All right. That's that's a first timer. All right. Um, the women's match. I'll do. Becky Lynch and Charlotte Evolution, last woman standing. Ooh, okay. But you have you have to watch the, um, uh, the package going into yes. it. Yes, so you get the feelings behind it and all that. Uh, so I had Tatiana from Series XM on our, on Boot to the Face once. And she like doesn't watch wrestling, and that was a match I told her to watch. Yeah. And then she was like, "Well, what about another match?" And I was like. Hogan versus Rock, WrestleMania. Okay. All so right. that's my other match. Now, sidebar, Tata ended up fucking watching a whole season of Hogan's Knows Best for some reason. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how she went from Hogan versus Rock to Hogan's Knows Best. <laughs> and then she ended up like veering off into Brooke Hogan's music career and like what? found like four or five songs that she likes that Brooke Hogan did. But that's a whole nother thing. But what? That bad That's my other match: Hogan versus Rock at WrestleMania 18, and turn your sound bar on and just listen to the fucking crowd. That match was not a technical masterpiece. It wasn't, but it was just people loving wrestling, nostalgia. All the people that loved the Mortal Races back then, and he was doing all <laughs> his stuff. 
he was doing all his little stuff back then. The Rock, like going from babyface to heel in the match, like that entire thing, I think was just a masterpiece of pro wrestling. You you can have all your five star matches and shit like that. I'm a storyline guy. I'm a guy that likes storytelling in the match, and that match with Rock and Hogan was just it was perfect. Like, and they'll they'll tell you that Rock on his own decided. Well, I guess I'm gonna heal this match, and for him to to have the wherewithal to switch it like that, yeah. And that Toronto crowd was just fucking nuts that night, man. And that you watch that match on mute, it's a hunk of shit. Like you're like, what the fuck is this, <laughs> right? Like Hogan can barely move. Rock's carrying him. Hogan's no selling for Rock the whole time. But you turn that volume up to ten, man, and you watch that match, and it is it's just so fucking. Let me get a bonus question before I let you go. Yeah. Um, let me add to that. A recent match. What recent match from now would you would you want to show somebody that didn't watch wrestling that would bring them in? A modern, a current day wrestling match. What match would that be? Mm, that'd be, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to cheat. It'd be a tie. Um, Storyline guy. Storytelling guy. Rock, Rock, Roman and Cody at WrestleMania, I thought was way better than than people are giving it credit for, just because they're mad Cody lost. But if you watch that match from entrance to entrance to the beginning of it, that match is fucking phenomenal. Um, but if you're a work rate guy and you think that the person that you want to see or you're trying to convince to watch wrestling likes work rate. You can't go wrong with fucking Osprey and Omega at this this last match they had. Oof, yeah, um, and I'm a big Will Osprey fan. Like the past couple of years, I I used to think Will Osprey and Zack Saber Jr. I couldn't stand either one of them. Still don't like Zack Saber Jr. Fuck that yeah. guy. But Will Osprey, he's he's the fucking man. Like he he can do no wrong in my eyes right now. Um, and the match with him and Omega at what was that Forbidden Door they wrestled at? Yes, yeah, just. You can't get better than that, man. You can't get better than that. And that was storytelling too, as well. Don't, yeah. don't forget that there was a lot of story behind uh, Osprey and Omega, as well. That like promo, said, the Osprey cut before their Wrestle Kingdom match about like being the pandemic guy and coming in and working. Like he should have won at Wrestle Kingdom, I think. Like I think he should have won both of them. But yeah, the the story with them is really good. Uh, I'm not really that big of an Omega guy. Like I, I think he's kind of overrated. I don't want to say that too loud because wrestling fans are listening, but yeah, I mean, um, the people bitch about Roman Reigns doing a Superman punch too many times. Count the V triggers. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to use your fingers and your toes because that shit happens about 37 times every match. Um, but him and him and Osprey, man, they just got a they got a chemistry together that's just you can't touch it. Yeah. Damn. That's a good, those are actually very good, uh, very good choices. All right. We're going to end I'm gonna it here. I'm going to be mad later, though. I'm going to be mad. Like, I should have said this. Call <laughs> me off guard. I should have, I don't know. We should have talked about Macho Man Steamboat. <laughs> oh, yeah. You could, I mean, like you said, you go, one of mine is, uh, you know, Hart, Bret Hart, Roddy Piper at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental title. That right there, you had yeah. you know, Piper as the brawler. You know, Bret Bret Hart as a technician guy, and then Bret Hart having to have to brawl because that's what that he had to like kind of go into that south. So you got like a mix of everything. You got like is that the one where Piper got him in a sleeper and Hart like did the little move off the turnbuckle? Yes. And yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Coliseum like, home video. I used to watch that shit so much when I was a kid. Yeah, man. That, that's that match right there. Like I said, it's it's a mix of brawl. It's a mix of like. You know, Roddy Piper's style of wrestling and Bret Hart's. And like, they both had to do each other's style of wrestling. So, like, you know, Roddy Piper had to start doing like headlock takeovers. He had to do the technical moves. And then, you know, Bret Hart had to actually get out, get outside the ring and actually like fight and brawl and, you know, eye scratch and all that. That's that. Like I said, I could talk about that match forever. That's, real, that's one of the real matches quick. I, I, know you're, I know you're trying to end this, but you brought up tape trading earlier. Yes. Tape trading is how I saw that match because we would. You know, give each like I was a big WCW guy at that time, so I would have all the WCW stuff, and my cousin loved WWF, and he would give me the Coliseum home videos. That Bret Hart match 
Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, and oh man, I want to think did Bret Hart, and Mr. Perfect have a ladder match that wasn't like televised? I want to think they Bret Hart had a ladder match with somebody that wasn't the first match with uh Shawn Michaels and I want to and was Razor. It, was it with was it with Michaels? See, this is one I of those things that people are gonna be like, "Yeah, no, you idiots." Yeah, you dumb fucks. It was Bret Hart and Roddy Piper. Yeah. I want to think it was Bret Hart, and Mr. Perfect, but I could be wrong. But he wrestled a match at Mr. Perfect where he like ripped Mr. Perfect singlet off, and when he had the Intercontinental Title, he had half a Mr. Perfect singlet also on his uh... shoulder. But like the Coliseum home videos from tape trade, and like I know you got. We got everything at our fingertips now, man. But yep. that was such a fucking good time in in wrestling to like wait and just go to Blockbuster Video, hoping that they got the latest fucking oh, bash man. at the beach there on the new releases, <laughs> and they never did, right? Like that was just that's a time that people will never understand if they didn't grow up then. Oh man, yeah. And they have a they, the good thing is they have a lot of those on uh, Peacock. If you go to like. Uh, they have like a category for it for yeah. all the calls he had like home videos. And I watched like the Shawn Michaels one, like the Shawn mm. Michaels greatest hits. And he's like narrating it obviously. And he, you know, they had like the, Oh man, it was him. The two dudes with attitudes against uh one, two, three kid and razor. Oh um, oh, so many good matches. Now, I, I might have to do that. that. That's that might be the rest of my night. Is just going, <laughs> okay, we can go on Peacock and watching some uh, Coliseum videos. Just watching that uh the old school wrestling dude, as my son calls it the 19s. He calls it wrestling yeah. in the 1900s. So my daughter says, like, Oh, you're watching thing. the 19s? I'm like, God damn it, dude. Why do you have to say that? She's like, Is there a dinosaur about to show up on this show? I'm like, girl, you know, get your ass <laughs> out of here. Like, I'm, I'm trying I'm to get him, man. I'm, I'm trying to get him to watch the old stuff. He uh he's a big uh Roman Roman Mark, that kid. He loves Roman mm -hmm. Reigns. My son tried watching wrestling Marco, and he was a big he liked the shield and he liked Stardust. And Stardust left, so that broke his heart. And yeah. then the shield broke up. And he was like, and he didn't say this, but he's kind of like, why the fuck would I waste my time with this? Like it's just, it's just heartbreaking. It's just, like, uh, well, all the people, all the people that I like either leave or turn on each other. Like, why the fuck would I watch this? Like I like I said, I don't want, I don't like obviously I'm trying to add this, but that's another thing. Wrestling teaches you a lot of life lessons, man. Yeah. Contract signings anybody. never go <laughs> according to plan a lot of the times. Uh, never get, never get married in a wrestling ring. Don't ever get married. If there's ever a birthday cake involved, be weary because exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of telltale signs. Like I said, weddings usually don't go to according to plan all the time. Contract signings, people will stab you in the back mm -hmm. <laughs> if they have to. Uh, people will cheat to win. Like yep. it's it, you know people cut like it's like I said it's it, wrestling teaches you so much stuff like. I'm not a, like a political person, but you know, if you watch a lot of politicians, it's about cutting promos. It's about good guys, bad guys. <laughs> it's about it's about the heel faction and the yeah. baby face faction. It's about the one mega heel, the one. And they all pull a rock. Face. They all fucking turn heel halfway all, through, and they all turn heel on you. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally like I said. Watch wrestling; it teaches you life lessons. That's if that's funny. one thing you're gonna learn from this show, definitely do that. It'll teach you everything you need to know, but. Again, man, thank you for being on the show, man. This is awesome. I definitely uh, definitely enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of it. We could fucking talk for another two hours. So. I know, man. I, 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 almost, mean, I almost went into a tangent, but I just... Yeah. I, if, I wish it wasn't so late Sunday night. I'd go fucking make another drink and, and come back. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be up at 5 a.m., though. Maybe, so. we'll, maybe we'll set up a part two like uh, before the month's over. Maybe we'll have to do a, do a sequel to this. Um, I'm down. I, you know, with this show, I don't do it every single week. It's basically whenever I can get somebody on. So yeah, if I can get you on again, well, uh, maybe we'll do it again. Maybe we'll do a, a, a direct sequel to this one. Yeah, you let me know. It, you know, if your listeners like it. Uh, I'm not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you listen to all of our, if you listen to all of our shows, it's there's something for everybody, and uh, yeah. I think you'll definitely be uh, definitely be well liked. But uh, before you go, definitely definitely plug. Plug away. Plug everything you got. Go uh, boot to the Face, you can follow us on Twitter at Boot to the Face. That's with the number two. Uh, we record on Twitch every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the audio comes out uh, either the day after or, or Thursday. And then on Thursday night, I do a show called 80 Proof, which is just like me and a couple of buddies. We, 
we have a couple of drinks. It's more like bar talk. We talk throwback Thursday. We talk aliens. We talk whatever's in the news at the time. <laughs> like th this is more of just like going to hang out with your buddies at the bar. Like whatever comes up. Uh, we we do like top threes. We talk about like women and not in a bad way. We love women. Um, but we talk about them in a good way. Trust okay. me. Uh, <laughs> we talk about everything on 80 proof. That's Thursday nights on Twitch, uh, 8 PM Eastern standard time. And then the audio comes out and follow us on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. We have a link tree, link tree, boot to the face, link tree, 80 proof pod. Um, but other than that, man, it's just, you know, hopefully if you, if you check us out, you like us, if you, don't like us and that's fine too just don't be talking shit because i do talk <laughs> shit back so if you're thin skinned and, and you ain't trying to get the smoke you might want to you might want to keep stepping so uh, but yeah and, that's and with all that, got. We'll, uh, yeah i mean with that we'll end it there I'll, uh thank you everyone for listening and uh i'll see you soon peace <laughs>